Welcome everyone. Here is my brief review of the format of the exam. You don't understand this, but I've had to redo this four times because I keep making mistakes. I'm not sure if I have the blooper reel. So when you get to that Floral Park Rec Center on Friday, uh, there will be four uh, parts to the exam and it'll be two sections with a break in between. So let's get started. And the first section of the exam will be your multiple choice questions. There will be 55 questions and you will have 55 minutes to answer them. It is up to you to keep track of time and make sure that you are on a good pace. Remember, there is no penalty for um, uh, guessing, so make sure that you do answer every question, but I hope you'll have enough time to finish them complete, uh, completely. There will be a stimulus for every question, whether it's a chart or a speech or a reading or a map or a graph, and this, is be, this will be 40% of your overall score. You've been doing a lot of questions the last two days. I hope you feel comfortable. Go with the key themes that we seem to see uh, continuing to uh, surface. After that, you will then have four short answer questions to answer in 50 minutes. Most likely, well, they will all be worth three points each. As we know, one of them will be experimental, but we won't know which one it is. Um, most likely each question is going to have part A, part B, and part C, and each part is worth one point. My advice is make sure you answer absolutely in complete sentences. Make sure that you have a few sentences for each answer, A, B, and C. It's up to you. I've heard mixed things from, from graders, um, whether or not you want to label it A, B, and C, or if you just want to write it all separate together. I'm going to leave that up to you, depending on how comfortable you feel with your answer. But please make sure you specifically answer. No intro, no conclusion. Just answer the question. And make sure you stay within the box that is given to you for those questions. And of course, make sure you answer the, the right question in the right box, because it'll probably be labeled question one, question two, question three, question four. These are just good argument questions that allow you to pick what you would like to use to defend your answer. Could be based on a reading, could be based on two uh, readings that they're asking you to compare, but please answer them. These are, I feel like these are three points for you and I don't want to see any zeros. Then you're going to take a break and then you're going to come back and get ready for your essays. So now you're going to have a total of 90 minutes to write these two essays. The suggested time is 55 minutes for the DBQ and 35 minutes for the long essay question. Please be aware that the DBQ does count more. So it's, it's definitely uh, worth more of your score. This is worth 25%. Um, you will start with 15 minutes of reading time. While you are reading the documents, I would uh, definitely use the acronym HIPPO. And I would try to identify either the historical context or the attended audience or the purpose or the point of view. I think purpose and point of view are often uh, the easiest to get credit for. And then the outset information, anything that you can think of that's triggered as you're writing, as you're reading the documents. Nobody's expecting this to be a perfect work, but you absolutely must be able to identify HIPPO for the documents. So that's how I would go about reading them, and then, again, this is 25% of your score. Once you're done analyzing the documents, now you only have 40 minutes to write the essay. So this is going to be out of seven points, and everything that is in a, a bold uh, bold face here is going to be worth one point. So we're going to start the essay with our introduction and a strong thesis sentence or two sentences. Uh, but make sure that it is clearly answering the question and clearly something that you can prove. My advice is, whatever the question is, begin, if you can, with just what happened before the time period of the question. I think that's always a good way to lead into it, and then you get to your thesis. Your second paragraph should be a background paragraph. This gets you the point for contextualization. What's happening? What are the broader issues that are happening during this time period? Then the challenging part is to take your notes on HIPPO and analyze the documents and also craft your argument. So you definitely need to go through 
whatever it says on the test. So most of them have said that you have to do HIPP, one of those, for at least four of the documents. That gets you a point. There's going to be a checklist. Then you're just going to get one point. Either your argument was clear and fully developed, or it was not. That's basically was the, was the essay, you know, did you understand the question? And then did you source at least six of the documents? That will get you a point as well. Remember, when you source the documents, you can put in parentheses doc one, doc three, uh, after you've used it. My advice is if the author of the document is someone you know, then use the name and say who the person was. That's always a good way of getting point of view and using the documents correctly. If you have outside information in your response, you will get that point. Try to put as much as you can. But I know that it's challenging to organize this. Just do the best that you can. Let's make sure we expand on our synthesis. I think everybody understands what synthesis is. I still don't think enough of you develop it in as much detail as you can. Explain what happened next in history, so whatever the next event is, next time period, and then try to describe either another time period where a similar issue happened or a different group that was impacted the same way in the same time period. And that would be the seven points for the DBQ. Then you're going to get the LEQ. And it's up to you if you want to look at that before you start writing the DBQ. I know for me, I'd rather just focus on one and look at that, the, these two questions later. But you're going to have a choice of two questions. They will probably have some similar theme to the historical thinking skill, whether it's uh, you know periodization or cause and effect, compare. But uh, you have to pick one. Make that choice right away. Some of you are a little bit indecisive. Go with what you feel the most comfortable with. I think that's obvious. And this is worth 15% of the score. This is worth six points. So again, your thesis statement will get you one point. The background paragraph will possibly get you one point. But I still think it's good to do to show that you understand the context. And then in your body paragraphs, your argument overall will get you two points and the historical thinking skill. So if it's a turning point, explaining why it's a turning point. If it's cause and effect, explaining what the causes are, what the effects are. And then your synthesis is the same as before. That gets you one point. So these essays really just try to make sure that you understand the question. Don't expect to be able to write everything that you know about the topic because you only have 35 minutes. So there you have it. Again, really proud of everybody. Getting sad that it's almost over. I'm wishing everybody the best of luck. And I will see you in class on Thursday because you're all probably watching this on Wednesday. All right, take care.